I am seen as a guy who hates Russell Westbrook. That, of course, is not true. But we on this show are willing to be honest and sometimes tell a star player that he's got a little bit of a hole in his game. And I think Westbrook from time to time can be a little bit of a stat patter, which I'm not a big fan of. Can we just call you hater? Not that you I'm hate not, him, but just a hater. I'm not. So like and, drinking the haterade. Antonio Daniels played 13 years in this league. He's got a ring. He is also a very outspoken pre- and post-game show analyst on Fox Sports Oklahoma. And he's not a pom-pom waver. He has ripped this team before. And he gets pushback on it. So let's bring him in via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Antonio. Okay. I am not saying that Westbrook (laughs) couldn't get 30 a night. He's a natural scorer. And 10 assists. But what I see, I I see him as a guy that gets about six, seven rebounds a game. And then he gets 10 to get a triple-double. And I simply think he is too great of a player to do that. <laughs> if, if, if a marginal guy wants to get a triple-double on a night and he's never had one, knock yourself out. It, it, isn't there a little stat padding going on with Westbrook and the rebounds? No. I don't think so at all. And, I, and I'm being completely honest with you. I've been blessed to cover Russ now for the past three years. And people have become so enamored with this triple-double. And the only reason is because... He's chasing history. So now we're talking about padding stats. But that's the whole point of basketball, is it not? You're supposed to try and get as many points, rebounds, and assists as you possibly can. There's nothing wrong with Russell Westbrook going out and doing what he does, which is rebound. And he said it the best. You know what? If I'm the first to it, I am going to get it. And what people don't take into consideration when they're talking about Russell Westbrook and his rebounds is what it does for this Oklahoma City Thunder team. Since we're talking about history over the past two years, he has 67 triple-doubles over the past two years. 53 and 14 is the Thunder's record in those games. Now, if these these quote-unquote padding stats didn't lead to Ws, I get it. But the fact of the matter is, when he triple-doubles in the past two years, they're winning 79% of the time. I have no problem with that whatsoever. By the way, Durant is now a more efficient player without him. Victor Oladipo exploded without him. Could I not make the argument that he is so dynamic, there are times he is suffocating to play with for other high-end players. Okay, so so let me give you another example, because I feel like this is an example we can use all the time. Okay. Okay? So last year, LaMarcus Aldridge averaged 17. This year, he averaged 23. Was Kawhi Leonard holding LaMarcus Aldridge back? Or Jonathan Simmons, a year ago in San Antonio, averaged six points, and now he doubled his scoring average to 14 this year. So was Kawhi Leonard holding him back? Or even Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes in his last year in Golden State averaged 11 points a game, and then he went up to 19 points a game. So was Steph Curry holding Harrison Barnes back? You know what? Different situations call for different responsibilities. Where Victor Oladipo is now, it's his team. So he's going to have a higher usage rate. He's going to have more opportunity to be who he is. This is Russell Westbrook's team. This is Russell Westbrook City. There's nothing wrong with that. So in coming here and being Victor Oladipo, no one's ever questioned his talent. Victor Oladipo was, one, a hell of a guy. He's a great guy and a great basketball player. But now he's in a position, in a situation, where he understands, this is my team. This team is going to go as I go. He has so much more responsibility on his shoulders than he had in Oklahoma City. That's not Russell Westbrook's fault. It's just Victor Oladipo stepping into a great situation. Listen, when somebody gets divorced, I understand if, if let's say somebody left you or me, I'm not, I mean, I don't want them to have a horrible life, but I don't want them to be happier than they were with me. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm just immature, but isn't, okay. uh, isn't there a part of Westbrook deep down with Kevin Durant that there's still a part of him that thinks you ditched me. I gave you everything I had, and you ditched me. Is I would understand if there wasn't a little resentment there, Westbrook to Durant, as he watches him now with a roster filled with all-stars. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe. Maybe. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But, you know, I know this city feels that way. Okay. The city definitely feels that way. When you – and this is the thing that I think people miss about Russell Westbrook and what that I respect the most. You can get enamored with the triple doubles and the rebounds and the assists and the points. It's the intangibles that don't show up on the stat sheet. So if you're a fan and you are paying for a ticket, what you want to see out of your star player is a guy that leaves his heart on the floor every single 
night. Yes. Energy, effort, enthusiasm, that ferociousness. He's a throwback player. You go back to the 90s and 80s, you put Russell Westbrook back there where guys had a legitimate dislike for one another. Like, I don't like the guys that I'm playing against. I don't want to be friends with you. So it's not just Kevin Durant. It's anybody else from the other 29 teams that he plays against. He plays that way. He is a throwback guard that says, you know what? I'm going to come at your head every opportunity I get. <laughs> I will say this. There's never been a player in recent memory who plays hard on every possession. That we, right. can, we can completely agree on that. He's very, so, Mi very Michael Jordan. Listen, I don't hate the guy. Christine thinks I hate him. I don't. I, th I think you're just a hater. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kind of think you do too, Colin. Right. I'm not going to lie. I, I kind of think you do too. I like this guy, Antonio. Okay, yeah. okay. Me and the rest of the city. Me and the rest of Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got to run this tape. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, listen, man, people are different. He's not overly verbal. He's not like you. He's not right. expressive. I mean, you walk into a room, I can tell right. right now. You're a guy that captivates the room. You talk, you're a broadcast. That's not what he is. So he goes to San Antonio, and I've been hearing them call him out. Parker calls out Kawhi, and Manu takes a jab, and Popovich takes a jab. Steven Jackson was on our show recently and talked about this. I want to play the tape right now. One of now. my favorite teammates. Okay, here we go. Y'all might not believe this, but the, the meeting that was so say threw up on Kawhi after the game, that, was, that came down from Pop to those guys. They didn't do that on their own. Tony don't have the balls to do that. And I know how selfish Tony is because he's the reason why we lost in 14 uh, against, <laughs> against OKC because he didn't want to pass the ball game six after I had hit six threes in a row. That's super low. I, I lost a lot of respect for Tony because they always say, well, this is the class, act, this is the class organization. That was low coming from a, one of your teammates. I wouldn't be surprised if this makes Kawhi want to leave. Because, because when your teammates going against you in the media like that and not having your back, you know that's coming from up top. Why would you want to be there? Okay, I gotta, I gotta be honest, mm. Antonio. I think Steven makes great mm. points. I think Pop and the Spurs. As do I. I, I don't like what they've done on him. Your thoughts? Well, well, for me, the one thing I agree with Jack about, and I actually talked with him about this. I thought he was spot on about Tony Parker. I thought he was. And I know Tony really well, but I. I think there are better ways to go about expressing your feelings on another teammate. You don't take sh subtle shots at a guy publicly. If you want to pull me aside privately and tell me whatever it is you got to tell me, the fact that you don't respect that I'm not on the floor, whatever it may be, you tell me that. But don't take public shots at me. Kawhi Leonard is not a role player. This is not a guy that is going to give you eight to nine points a night. Kawhi Leonard is one of the top five players on the planet. So the fact of the matter is he deserves more respect than that. From Manu Ginobili, I thought Manu was somewhat right, though. I did. I didn't think Manu took a jab at him by saying, we need to move forward as if Kawhi Leonard is not here. Because we all know in all professional sports, it's a next-up mentality. Right. Next-man-up mentality. So you can't just kind of sit back and continue to look for Kawhi Leonard to come through that door. If he's not coming, he's not coming. You got to move on as business as usual. So I wasn't, I wasn't tripping on what Manu said. I wasn't. I thought Tony Parker was 100% wrong in what he said about Kawhi Leonard and the doctors and so on and so forth. There are better and more professional ways to go about that, especially communicating with your teammate, a star player at that. Antonio Daniels, good stuff, giving Westbrook a lot of love. See, we give Westbrook love on this show. Now, it doesn't come I, from... I do. It doesn't come from me all the you time. You gotta love him, Colin. He, I know you gotta love. Him. We gotta change that, man. You gotta put some love on Russ. I've been respect trying on Russ, for three years. Russ's name now. <laughs> okay, yeah, keep trying. Please keep trying. All right, absolute pleasure having you on the show, bud. Appreciate you, Colin. Thank you, Antonio Daniel. No, no. Listen, there is nobody that plays as hard as Westbrook does. He, nobody. I was talking to a friend. I, do you know Ryan Rosillo at all? Do you know him? Yes. And I was talking to Ryan about this. I was in the car about a week ago. I called him, and he's like, he loves him. But he he shares my sentiment. And he goes, there are times late in games, I'm screaming at my TV, get out of your tunnel. But he made the point that he, he looks like Jordan. Like Jordan was just defense, offense, talking, I mean, it was just – Michael was relentless. And by the way, I like LeBron, but LeBron takes quarters off. And Westbrook plays at a level and a pitch that, like, you just don't get. You just don't get. And that, he deserves a ton of credit. And Antonio's point was, when you pay all that money to go to a game, you know what you want from your stars? Diving on the floor. That is where Westbrook, tip of the cap, nobody in this league is better. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.